So you've started intuitive eating and well-meaning people in your life have started saying things like, I'm just concerned about your health. I am worried about your weight. That's too much food. So in today's video, I have some solidarity for you and some helpful tips to help you navigate intuitive eating when others don't support or understand. Because it hurts when those that you love say things like that. I am Laura Cragen and I'm an intuitive eating and mental health coach for Latter-day Christian women. And I have my own workbook, course, and coaching program to help you reduce your stress and eat intuitively. And if you like my content and you want to support my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe. It really helps me move this forward. So now let's get on to the juicy stuff. So let's start from the beginning and paint a picture of what life really feels like for you right now. You are so excited you've found intuitive eating. You are finally eating things that you haven't in the past and it feels so liberating and you want the whole world to know about it. Your friends, your family, your spouse. You can finally see through the mud of all the crazy things that diet culture has taught you and now you can't unsee it and you can see how messed up it all is but you feel good in your heart knowing where you at and you accept your body and you're starting to make some great strides with your health. But people may have these concerns about you. They are nervous about your food choices. They are nervous about your health and that you're gaining weight. They also may be nervous that you don't have much in common with them anymore. If this sounds like you, tell me in the comments below. I want to get us more of a conversation flowing of what this is really feeling like for you right now. Who is giving you a hard time about intuitive eating and what are the things that they're saying? So I know exactly where you're at and it's really conflicting because you love it so much, but you also have this other side of everyone telling you that maybe you're not doing the right thing. But you need to stick with your own intuition and follow with what's right. Let me tell you my story about my husband and I, the hardest part of all for me when I started intuitive eating. So my husband and I loved being healthy and doing all the things together. We would work out together, we had this common shared interest and that's what we started from early on in our marriage. He is also a personal trainer on this side and had been doing that for years as well. We would go to the gym together, we would start new diets, we would restrict certain foods that we thought were bad in our house. We didn't have kids at the time, so we were really gung-ho. We were able to put that effort towards those goals. But it still did continue after we had kids. All up until we had three little kids. But me and my husband both still had that much more of a fierce determination to make sure we still looked and were healthy in a certain way. But it was so much harder. I had gotten older, I had started gaining some more weight, and it was harder to do those things in the past. I felt like I needed to lose the baby weight. My body changed a lot more than his did and I would compare myself to him and I felt awful. So I started to see that after many years of dieting, I had finally hit rock bottom. I was feeling at war with myself and so empty. And if any of you have heard my story before, you know that my mind was so sick and I hated my body. I knew that there had to be a better way to live. And the spirit pushed me to find the answer and I found intuitive eating. So through these principles of intuitive eating and through my journey of depression, suicide ideation, and eating disorders, and going through a whole month long treatment program away from my family, I needed to overhaul that relationship with my body and with my food. And with all that work and with all that struggle, I did find that hope and that healing more and more. However, that did not mean that it was going to be easy to navigate this new territory with my husband. I had totally shifted everything that we do together and we really struggled. We found ourselves not having anything in common and some things were very triggering to me as I was going through my recovery. So my husband had to be careful and I had to be careful with what he said and what he did when it came to conversations on health. And we both missed those times together but we knew it was not a healthy place for me to participate anymore. We would have open and honest conversations with each other and he would be as open as he could with me. I would have to accept that he wasn't gonna accept my ideas. And at the end of the day, we really just wanted both of us to be happy. And that became a great foundation to keep our relationship stable and intact. I would explain to him sometimes what I would learn, but I would not force it on him. And of course, sometimes I would get opinionated and I would have to bridle myself and just let it go. <laughs> And I found like that was the best thing that helped me. I can't convince him to be an intuitive eater and do this with me. I let him do his thing and he will let me do mine. We had to find other ways to stay connected. We have great respect for each other and we still have to work things out, but we are in a much better and healthier place for both of us. So let's start with some other helpful tips now that we've talked about my story. And this is definitely gonna start with 
boundaries. Now, boundaries is not a dirty word. Boundaries tells others what you will do. A lot of times we feel like boundaries means what the other person does, but it's the exact opposite. It's just telling them what you will do within certain situations. And I can imagine if you are here and you're anything like me and a lot of women in this world, we tend to be people pleasers. There is a side of that that we can honor and we can respect, but not as a way to self-sacrifice ourselves. So one boundary you can set first is you get to choose what you do with your body. You feel like intuitive eating is right. You don't want to feel like your body and your whole lifestyle of health is something that you worship in your life and you give all your time to. You don't want to do that anymore. This is also a conversation between you and God in a way that you can let God prevail in your life and you get to choose what to believe in that body of yours. Number two, as a second boundary you can have is you will not participate in body bashing or diet talk. And this will be hard because this is a lot of how women bond a lot of the time. Or like I said, with my spouse. It might be the case in your family and different family members that you connect with on that. And number three, you're gonna find ways that you're gonna participate or not participate now going forward with working out or having healthy lifestyles with them. You may or may not work out with them. You may or may not do that healthier lifestyle thing with them. You just seem to keep your ground and figure out what is gonna be best for you on this new journey that you are on. And keep that ground on what you decide in a gentle and respectful way. Here are some of the things you can control. Your priorities, how you spend your energy, your time, your means, which is money, how we treat each other, and who we go to for guidance. But you still might be thinking in your mind, how do I convince my spouse or my friend or my mother-in-law intuitive eating is the right way to go? Here's my answer. You don't. <laughs> but let me explain to you how you can have successful conversations. <laughs> Number one is to keep the conversation flowing. You will have many conversations over your whole lifetime now that you're on this path. And secondly, you are gonna listen so well. And that's what's most important is that we need to listen more than we speak. And three is respect. We should be considerate of other people's opinions and see how they value those things. There is a great scripture in the Bible, 1 Peter 3, 1 through 8. This is a great passage of scripture that will help you in any hard conversations you will have in life. Some of my favorite phrases are, and this actually applies to wives. It says, the word be won by the conversation of the wives. In this passage of scripture, it's talking about if women have been converted to the gospel, but their husbands have not, this is a great way to help persuade and tell them about what you believe in. And of course, we're applying this to intuitive eating, but it still goes along with a lot with the gospel. You are only going to persuade or to show your opinion by the conversations that you have with others and how you have that conversation. Another verse in that passage of scripture is, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one for another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. This is all Christ's teachings. The tone that we have in our conversations are everything. So have a gentle and courteous and kind tone as you converse. You would want them to do that for you. So you're gonna model that by doing it first. You can navigate this journey with others around you, I promise. And you may be a wonderful example to them and give them a path that they may need later on down the road. So if you need more help with this, check out my course. It is my Latter-day Intuitive Eating 12-week course. I have a whole module dedicated to this very topic of how to deal with others when you are doing intuitive eating. But if you want just a taste of it and you're not ready to purchase, go try my course sample. It is free to you and you can find that in the link below or go to my website. Also join the waitlist for my group coaching program. This is gonna be my pilot program. This is my first time doing group coaching and I'm so excited to create more of a community in all this. It is gonna be called my Latter-day Intuitive Eating 12-week group coaching program. It includes 12 community calls through Zoom, a private Facebook community, access to my robust course to implement intuitive eating into your life, the program workbook, email support from me personally, and bonus lessons such as this one we have talked about today. You can check that out at my website. And if you like this video, watch my previous video where I debunk three myths of intuitive eating such as if I let myself go and eat whatever I want, I won't stop. Have you ever thought of that? But thank you for watching today and I will see you next week. Bye.